Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm here to uh, try and keep you entertained. I know this is the last session, so just hang on. Uh, no one leave, because if you leave, I'll just cry and hide on the bottom of the podium. Just kidding. Okay, that's supposed to make you laugh, but that's okay. All right. So first of all, as Linda said, my name is Adrian Darmon. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at First Foundation. Uh, so just a little bit about First Foundation. I promise I won't bore you. Uh, First Foundation is a full-service financial institution. Uh, we, off, we, we started in 1990 as a wealth management firm, uh, specifically in the RIA, RIA space. And in 2007, we decided to open up a bank, and so we did. And uh, it has grown rapidly ever since. Uh, right now, we have about three and a half billion assets under management in, re in the RIA, and about one and a half billion is, uh, is our bank size. So within, uh, what is that, less than 10 years, our bank has grown from, when, when I first started in 2010, it was about 250 million, now we're, now we're one and a half billion. Um, so there's a lot of things going on, you know, obviously at the bank and a lot of different processes. And um, there are various different challenges that we face. So uh, today I'm going to share with you uh, some of those challenges, some of the processes that we went through uh, to roll out Laserfish uh, with, and integrating it with the various core systems that we have within our firm. So first and foremost, I'm going to go over uh, some of the challenges that we've, that we've had. Um, first of all, as I mentioned, multiple core systems. On the advisor side, we run... Uh, Advent APX, and on the bank side, we run Pfizer Precision. And in addition, in, in, and in addition to that, we also have a trust department, an insurance group, and all sorts of different things. There's multiple core systems that we, have to, that we have to deal with. Second thing is every division has its own processes. And, and, and as you, uh, if some of you are in banking, you know that the banking side is usually very stringent. Everything is very, very, uh, um, what's the word? Very uh, uh, systematic, very, auto, very um, uh, 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 compliance driven. Whereas the advisor side, yeah, sometimes some things you do well, some things you kind of follow through, everything else you just kind of say, ah, oh, yeah, that's Schwab's job. We're, we're a big Schwab custodian, so we do that quite a bit. So um, uh, that's, so it, different processes is, uh, is what we have uh, uh, coming in. Um, and we're also experiencing rapid growth. As I mentioned, when I first started in 2010, we were about 250 million, and now we're one and a half billion. So there's a lot. We've added new employees. There's about 60 employees when I first started. This was a combination of both bank and advisors, and now we're roughly at about 325 within five years. So it's growing. Uh, there was two locations when I first started. Now, like Linda mentioned, we have 12. So there's a lot of expansion going on. So we needed something to deploy pretty quick. So here's a little bit about us again. So again, we have our bank. Here up top, and then we have again the investment management firm. We have our trust, and then we also have our insurance division. So, how do the question was how do we bring all of this together? Okay, how do we tie all these different processes together? Banking, we for sure there's already uh, its own um, uh, document imaging solution. If, if you ever if you were in the banking space, you know that especially in the FISA world, um, you're 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 automated you're automatically given this product called Director. You know, it's great for housing images, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't do much else. Uh, it doesn't do half of what the laser fish solution does. So we needed a way to be able to tie all these together. We needed a way to be able to view a client from an executive perspective to, to, to be able to see, okay, I want to see everybody, and I want to see what services they have within First Foundation. I want to see if they're a trust client, investment management, insurance, and bank. What, what do we need to do to be able to do that? So at the heart of all of these different areas of business is laser fish. So this is what ties everything together. All of our documents, all of the client files, in essence, is laser fish within there. And then for, for our in, 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 in encompassing all of, the, all of First Foundation from the front end, from when the clients come in the door, is Microsoft Dynamics. So we've tied all that together. Now, uh, it wasn't always like this at First Foundation. To get to this point, we have to formalize a plan. And it was, a, it was, it was, it was quite a process, and, and we have to get uh, several buy-ins. But I just want to kind of go over this plan uh, um, uh, this, the, the challenges that we faced and, and some of the different um, nuances that we have to go through. So when, we, when we're talking about identifying a plan, but the first process that we had to do was identify our data sources. So obviously we had CRM. We housed our prospects and clients, information, you know, correspondence with both clients and prospects, information about prospects and clients, everything that you can think of, um, CRM has it all. We use it to mail merge. We use it to um, uh, spam our clients, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better word is what we call it. You know, but everything, CRM drives everything that communicates with our client. And then, of course, we have Laserfish. And, and, and we, when we first rolled out Laserfish, our thought process was, you know what? We just needed an electronic file cabinet that uh, we didn't have to pay three, four different licenses for that the IT department can manage a single 
uh, 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 electronic filing cabinet. And then when we first saw the demo, we saw a workflow, and we said, well, we could do so much more. So we actually rolled out our first uh, 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 workflow was, was uh, um, in creating a single loan process. So that was one of the uh, first adventures that we took on. But LaserFish has its own sets of data, account documentation. We have our new account opening there now, and account maintenance workflows, all these different things. And then we also have, obviously, the multiple core applications, right? So we've, we, we mentioned um, we've got the, the, the uh, that contains account information, account relationship, account maintenance tools, uh, transactional data. All these things live in the core. So we have to attack this. And, and this is a massive undertaking, mind you. This is a massive project, limited resources. So it was basically myself initially and, and a group of guys from ECS. So I have Debbie here on the, to, to my left. And they've been pretty much be, been very, very helpful in making sure we, we roll everything out systematically and we make sure that we can, uh, the users can accept what we've been rolling out. So I want to kind of go over real briefly what our plan is before I pass it on to my colleague Ashok. So our initial action plan encompasses getting by, obviously executive had to buy in, and primarily department managers. They have to, we, have to get it, we have to get their buy-in. You know, because if they're not going to use it, forget it. Okay, so we can just trash it down the road. Executives, when we pitch Laserfish all day long, they're going to save you money, it's going to save you time. They love it. But then ultimately, it's the department managers that we have to get buy-in for. So we have to buy a lot of lunches, you know, all sorts of different things. But I'll let Ashad get into the details of that. Okay? And we, start out, we, start, we also started small. So <laughs> I'm going to say this again. <laughs> Um, uh, one of the things, what, one, one of the analogies I like to use, it's, it's like a drug, <laughs> okay? So you give a little bit of it. You give a little taste of laser fish, here's what it can do. You, 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 you automate a, pr a small process for them, and then they go, wow, this thing is so great. What else can you do? Then you sell them more drugs, in essence. So that's, in essence, what we do with, with what we mean by starting small. Ashad has a different uh, way to be able to talk through this, and uh, it's not drugs, I promise you. And I'm not on one right now. <laughs> what was in that chocolate? No, I'm all right, uh, and we also rolled out in phases. So we attacked a particular division first, who needed it first, who needed, who needed it foremost, and then we went on from there and onwards. And then, dude, where did you find my picture? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, rinsing, rinsing and repeating. So we just kept the same process over and over again as we attacked the different divisions. So I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague, Ashat. There you go. Right. <clears throat> so... I'm going to start talking uh, about our action plan, and we're actually going to start at getting buy-in. So how do we get to where we are now? Essentially, to get buy-in, um, we had to have a meeting. And then we had another one, and another one, and a couple more, you know, about 10 to 20, maybe like 60, depends on who you ask. But we essentially had meetings. We, we met with bunch of people, department managers, executives, our bars, um, users, just anyone that was going to be affected by this process. And the reason for these meetings is because communication is key in, in, in doing any kind of process, especially something that's as big as integrating, you know, four different, um, I guess, business uh, different business silos into one and uh, getting everything integrated with Microsoft Dynamics CRM and Laserfish. And without, without the communication with all of our users, all of our executives, uh, you know, starting this project or essentially finishing it wouldn't be possible. So who do we communicate with? Well, first of all, we started off with the executives. We met with them. We sold Laserfish to them. And the reason for this is because if Executives are invested in the project. If they see time savings, they see cost savings, it's guaranteed to get you one step closer to success. Um, their influence helps uh, get the resources and the manpower necessary to complete your project. Next, we met with the managers, uh, the managers of the departments that we were going to be working with to get all of our integrations done. Um, since managers are in charge of these users, getting their buy-in was of paramount importance. Essentially, if a manager buys into the process, they'll be able to get their users to buy into whatever you're trying to do as well, in this case, integrating everything together. Next was the users. And for any project to be successful, we need the users to really be invested in it. Um, we met with users to try and figure out uh, you know, how they were going to use it, how they currently do their process, and what we can do to make it better. Um, we told them continuously about the advantages they can get and uh, 
to you know once it's launched and you know just try to get them eager for this uh, for this process to get done to get finished so that they could start using it and finally our VAR uh, as Adrian mentioned we work with ECS imaging and I think we work with them pretty much almost the whole time we've had Laserfish, and they've been great throughout the whole process. Anytime we have a new idea, we'll pitch it to them. Um, they're always coming back to us with, you know, if they think of a better idea, ways to do it. If we, you know, mention something that's just completely out there that doesn't exist, they're always ready to jump on and uh, build something new for us, do some custom development, and essentially make uh, our dreams a reality, I guess, in a sense. <laughs> Dream. And uh, again, what do we communicate about? So obviously with each one of these, we're going to communicate about something different, but new features are always a big topic of discussion. Um, we let our executives know about new things that we can do with some of the features that Laserfish may be releasing in the future or are currently working on. We talk about the integrations that we can build that maybe um, Laserfish has pre-built or ones that uh, we can work with ECS to build for them. And finally, future plans. You know, we might, we might make a process now, but essentially, as soon as we finish or between the process, we already start talking about what the next step is, where we can take this process, how we can make it better. And we, we, we don't let the enthusiasm, you know, go down. We always keep them pumped up. We always um, keep them, you know, wanting more, essentially. Like a drug. <laughs> like a drug. <laughs> so next, starting small. Essentially, there's this thing called the Goldilocks principle, and I'm sure uh, if you guys, well, you guys have all probably heard Goldilocks the story, but if you haven't heard about the Goldilocks principle, it's in simple terms, it's the just right. So in this case, in this illustration, if planet Earth was too close to the sun, it would be too hot. If it was too far away, it would be too cold. So it's just right. It's right at the place to support life. And we, we use this principle across uh, our, essentially, project plan whenever we're implementing this. So for the size of the project, essentially, if a project is too big, it takes up too much time. If we try to attack a, you know, a very big chunk of it at one time, users, they, st they start losing interest in it. Um, it might start costing too much because it's taking so much time to develop, so on and so forth. And when s projects are too small, sometimes they're just too insignificant. People will look at it and, you know, they may not want to participate. They may not think that um, it'll make a big enough impact in their workflow or, you know, in savings for them to actually uh, invest their time into building it. The same goes for involvement in these projects. So when there's too many people involved in a project, the project can go off course, which can uh, definitely happen when you're trying to integrate different systems. You know, the bank wants 10 people from their side, the advisors want another 10, trust wants, you know, 15 people. Soon enough, you have, you're in this room with 40 people and everyone wants something different. So when it's too big, it can, you know, the conversation can go completely somewhere else and you may end up somewhere where you don't want to be, essentially getting nothing done. And again, if it's too few people, then you might miss an important detail, you might miss something that, um, you know, part of the process that the people in that room may not have known, but others may have. So you just need to find the right spot. And finally, as Adrian mentioned, department managers. These are some of the most important people involved in any integration, at least for our company, and any project. When they're not willing to participate can slow the project down. If they don't want to invest the man hours of their users to help, if, uh, if they just they don't give you their time. And some managers that are too eager to participate, they rush the project sometimes. They, you know, they want to just get it launched, get it done, but you ha you're not done uh, with all your testing, with all your building, and you may launch something that's half done and in that case, uh, it may fail, and users, you know, seeing that it's not working, may just stop using it. So that's uh, the reason we start small. And an example of where we started for our uh, CRM integration with Laserfish was <coughs> uh, reducing double entry. 
I know you may think this doesn't have a lot to do with CRM or laser fish, but um, once we get there, you guys will see sort of where this is leading. So essentially, our challenge was that when opening a new account, whether it was for the bank side, the advisor side, our trust side, or our insurance side, uh, users would have to input this information to multiple PDF forms. And most of the time, it's the same exact information. Name, social security number, address. And the problem with this is there's a risk of mistyping information. So the solution was to figure out a way so that all of these forms could, could get filled out at once. And so what we did is we essentially built a laser fish form that had captured all the information from all the different PDFs. And then we used the information from there to fill out the actual PDF forms. So this is an example of one of our new account information uh, forms that we built for the advisor side. As you can see, a user would go in here, fill out all this information, and then we have a workflow in the back that would essentially take all that information and fill out however many um, PDFs it needs to. So uh, if an account, you know, if, a, if it's a simple account that only needs two documents, it'll fill out those two. If they choose other options and may need to add other forms, it'll add those forms and pre-fill the information from there as well. So next, rolling out in phases. The advantages of doing this kind of approach for, um, for us, for this integration, as well as any project we've essentially gone on with Laserfish, is that, first of all, we can do training. So users uh, get more training sessions with less material. So we launch something small, we do training for that very small, you know, essentially for that Laserfish form, let's say. So once we do that training, um, the next time when we roll out another piece of this, which may, which I'll go into more, we're going to do training on that other piece, but we're also going to touch on this first piece. So now they're getting, you know, some of the training that they got in the beginning again, and we're just doing this repetitively so that, you know, people understand it um, and, you know, they can remember it. Same for questions. Uh, the more training sessions you have, the more opportunities there are for questions. So uh, we've had users ask us questions, you know, maybe in our third phase of deploying something that had to do with the first phase, and it's easy for them to communicate with you. And it's less for users to learn at once. Again, if uh, you give them too much, if, uh, they may not understand it, they may not be able to use it, but in little chunks, they're able to comprehend um, how to do everything. The next is process improvement. So rolling out in phases allows us to receive feedback during all of these training sessions. So we essentially receive feedback about the phase before, about the current phase, if they have any questions. And we also ask them about enhancements that they would want in the next phase that maybe we can add. Um, and maybe they've used you know, uh, whatever we've already deployed. And they've found errors. They've found problems. Or maybe they just want something new. They've realized that, hey, you're doing this. Uh, there's this other small process that we do along with this. Can you add this on there? So give us an opportunity to build on the next phase. And finally, momentum. So rolling out in phases allows the users to you know, stay with it, to stay excited. Um, as we continually deliver these results and meet with these users, they're always you know, expecting more in a good way, not in a bad way. <laughs> Uh, they're, you know, they're expecting something else. They're always, um, you know, staying in contact with you and communicating with you about uh, how it's working and, you know, how it's going to work in the future. So that's essentially rolling out in phases. And finally, rinsing and repeating. Uh, essentially, all we do is we take all these principles and we reapply it to every single phase. So it uh, includes, like I said, meeting with users and getting feedback, uh, determining the need for training. So if we have one training, the users maybe didn't completely understand, we may have another training next week. Or we may have, you know, uh, we may touch up on the subjects that they were having a hard time understanding. Again, planning changes to the current phase, uh, finding bugs and inefficiencies, and new features and enhancements. Um, it, it allows us to basically, for the next phase, be ready for it. 
And like I said, avoiding previous hardships. So if something didn't work before, either with training or with the process itself, we go back the next time and uh, do it better. And like I said, features, enhancements, anything that the users ask for, we're able to implement. So it's not just one big thing that we're giving them and saying, here it is, start using it. It's essentially a, um, we're working together with the users to build something better. So the next steps uh, after getting rid of the double entry. Essentially, what we wanted to do was pre-fill these laser fish forms with information from the CRM, view the client's documentation from within the CRM, and pass information to and from each of the core systems, from the CRM to LaserFish, from LaserFish to CRM, as well as to any of our other cores. So I'm going to be showing you guys um, two of the processes that we did after getting rid of the double entry. And, um, and you guys can just see sort of how they each build upon each other. So the first one is pre-filling the LaserFish form with information from the CRM. So the first thing we had to do was create a database view of the important information that was in there. So we have our clients, and uh, our CRM is organized in a way where uh, we have clients and we have relationships. So any information that we want to capture from either of those, we essentially had to create a view for, just so that information would be easily accessible. Then what we did is, from our CRM, we uh, passed the ID of that, uh, of that record over to LaserFish, and we added a link within the CRM that would link us straight into the LaserFish form that we were trying to get to. Finally, we would look up the client information based on that unique ID. And as you can see, this is the same form that we were using before to fill out all those PDF forms. Now what it's doing is it's doing a lookup to that database view based on that URL that we used from the CRM. So all that information that it pre-filled, and I know it's not a lot, this was a test, it, it, it can essentially fill out this whole form. <laughs> but um, all of that information is coming from the CRM. So now users don't have to, um, only have to enter it once into the CRM, and then they can use that information to fill out all of those PDF forms we were talking about before. And the next was viewing the client's documentation from the CRM. So now that they're able to fill out these forms, get all the account documentation filled out and signed, they get all that documentation, they upload it back into LaserFish, you know, for keeping, for storage. What we wanted to do is get rid of, um, get rid of the need for people to go into a client's record and then have to go back into LaserFish, figure out where that client is, and, you know, get any of their documentation, get anything that, um, that you know, they may need for maybe a meeting with the client or whatever else it may be. So what we did is uh, something very similar to uh, pre-filling the form, which is getting that unique ID, passing that from CRM to LaserFish Web Access, and essentially bringing up the client's record from, uh, from LaserFish. So whenever you open up a contact record or relationship record within our CRM, um, at the bottom, there's always a LaserFish window that gives you uh, the user's, essentially LaserFish, I guess profile, LaserFish folders, with all of their account documentation and anything else that pertains to them. And Q&A time. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, that was pretty quick. Yes. Uh, our CRM is on premise. Yeah, so we're able to do a little bit more um, because it is, and we're able to access some of those database views. Yes? Do you use an off the shelf CRM or your own? I'm curious. Microsoft uh, Dynamics. Okay. It's yeah. off the shelf, very customizable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we do use, I guess, a flavor of it uh, that Celentica, which is a CRM company, designs, but it's. For, for wealth managers? Yeah, yeah, for wealth managers. Yeah. And, and uh, your uh, forms populate all those insurance forms and mutual fund forms and. We're we're starting to look at some of the um, uh, some of the wealth manage management forms. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're we're, we're a Schwab uh, custodian. We're like eighty percent Schwab, and the rest is TDA. Uh, they're more friendly using Laser App. So if you're if you're a, if you're a yeah if you're if you're an RA, you know what I'm talking about. 
Um, so we're actually trying to figure out a way to be able to take data from CRM into Laser App. Uh, so we don't have to, so we essentially can, can, can bypass the, uh, the laser feature forms. They essentially function the same way, but, but, but it's, uh, 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 the um, uh, laser app is specific to those RIAs, which we don't, we don't, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, essentially, with, with laser feature forms. Uh, so what we're building with the uh, laser feature forms is strictly our internal forms. So before we fill in those formal... You know, um, uh, mutual fund docs, every all the all the legalities and all that. We we use laser fish forms for that. All the stuff that we build internally. Yes. Do you have um, AC mixers for your client stations going at all? Uh, we uh, do work with DocuSign. Um, we're working on doing some implementations. Uh, currently, none of our forms are essentially like client facing. Um, we're a very I guess we do a lot of personal banking, so it's more of one-on-one. -on -one. We go to meet with the clients. We don't like them, um, you know, just going in. We're not very retail forms. on the banking yeah. side. Yeah. So, so we. The RIA space. The RIA space. Uh, we 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 the the DocuSign that we use right now is the DocuSign that that came with Schwab. So the Schwab piece, we, we that that's already all DocuSign. Uh, internally, there's really not a lot of forms that we need the DocuSign. We are using the finger signing on a few of our forms. Uh, the so so for the um, for the uh, oh my gosh what is that agreement called I know what you're talking about the IMA what we call the IMA investment management agreement that's that's still a wet signature at this time oh, okay. yeah do you have any plans to move forward with that or? we're we're looking into it yeah. yeah at this time we're looking into it yeah. uh, we're looking into doing that to a majority of our forms we're just we're starting at our uh, account opening forms for essentially um, internal forms I guess and the bank forms, and we're just building on from there. Like I said, we, we like to start small and then build on top of that. What's interesting is the IARD, um, we, we do everything with electronic signatures through FINRA and IARD. <laughs> Why can't we do client signatures? It's funny that the regulators say we can, but they're, they're the ones who actually use it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it definitely is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other? Oh, yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Um, Oracle sales cloud. Um, I, as far as Laserfish goes, yeah. oh, I. That would be a question that our friends at ECS can answer for you on the <laughs> left here. Keep 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 in mind the connector is is essentially it it, it it reads the screen right and it and it scrapes whatever data you choose from that screen as long as that screen remains static. I think it can capture anything. So yes. For the you mean initial look at Laserfish. So we, we had a, we actually looked at when when we first rolled it out we looked at um, we initially had like five on the table um, obviously a couple from the uh, uh, a couple from the from the that's that were specific to the banking industry since, since they're the ones that's kind of like already big in the space uh, we looked at uh, uh, then then we we narrowed it down to three uh, which was the, the 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 banking platform that we came with a product called um, 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 Director and we looked at, I can't remember the name of the other one but it's a company based out of the next of Kansas, and then we looked at Laserfish, and uh, the other two were essentially were just that. They were essentially electronic file cabinets. They would have been great if that's what we were looking for, but we, what we liked about Laserfish was they had all these ad added features. Their workflow, and this was mine in 2010, was already very mature. Um, we, we could already see like, wow, you could already do this. You could move this doc. You could actually send an email. We're like, great. So then we, we had a proof of concept set up, and that was kind of uh, it, and we just, we, just, we just took off from there. So, how are you utilizing it in your internal technology? Internal HR. Yes, HR, we're using yes. Part, parts. We've actually just we've actually built what we call our uh, personal action notice form, and now they call it the EPAN form. Um, and that's that's the little that's the, the we we've HR has always been very resistant, 
And they've always been like, no, our stuff is, our, our stuff is confidential, blah, blah. So we built them a separate repository. We asked ECS what the best way is to create them a separate repository. So we created a separate repository. And we initially started out with this electronic, because it's the end of year, promotions come in and all that. So everybody wanted these forms. So everybody's filling all these PDF forms. They're all getting mad. And so we said, we're going to build you an ePen. Try it out. And so we, we, we rolled it out. And they just kind of, oh, my God, this thing is godsend. So now they're coming to us to watch. And we like, what else can you do for us? So now we're looking to scan all the personnel records, and hopefully we can uh, get all that out of the way. They're coming to me, not him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sell drugs. <laughs> yeah, so, so with HR, we are doing those forms. They do want us to do other forms um, that obviously are internal forms. But we're also working with them to get all of our employee files into LaserFiche. Um, that, that, that is something that they've been pretty resistant about, but uh, getting the separate repository and ensuring them that you know we do audit and you know no one else will be able to get in has um, has definitely helped. So, you know, latest security features are um, are definitely uh, helping us get there. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah, he's the, he's the hustler. I just supply. <laughs> yes. Yeah, pretty much, well, yes. Yeah. So our CRM uses SQL. Um, Laser Switch uses SQL. Yeah. And, and how about the, on the, the analytics side, the reporting side? Like, do you use like uh, anything within the Laser Switch or more SSRS or SSRS? Right now, right now we're exploring uh, uh, the different options within reporting. Um, reporting is a totally different discussion, but what we're looking at is a uh, it's a it's a it's a more uh, robust data warehousing capability, because like I said, with, with the multiple cores. Um, so uh, obviously within each, each core, there's a reporting solution already built in that came with those. But we, we, we opted for a, you know, we opted, for, we're, we're looking right now actually for an, an independent uh, data warehouse solution, essentially, that can tie everything all together. So. But we do use some of the capabilities of LaserFish Forms reporting for, um, yeah. for doing some of our reporting, such as commissions and stuff. Um, and we also do run some reports within the repository itself for um, usually auditing functions, but uh, I think some of our departments use it for, for other things as well. Yeah. Do you use the uh, SDK integration with CRM, or are you using the backdrop? Uh, uh, SDK. Not, well, we're sort of. Uh, we're not actually using either. We're, we're using, we're, we're yeah. we're oh. using um, He knows. So for the view access, we're just using latest switch web access. We're giving it a link and a search term. Um, and for the forms access, it's it's a form that we built. We're giving providing the URL to CRM, and CRM is essentially passing on the um, uh, essentially the unique ID of that record through the URL. Yeah, and then we're just doing a search on the back end to the repository or to the database. Uh, we we we're not using that right now because of the the, the Great Plains is not something that um, it's not in the bank space yet, or not not very popular right now. So we're yeah 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 no 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 not yet in the back end. Uh, yeah, we're not. <laughs> we, we haven't looked into. We it. we haven't looked into yeah. that one yet, but I might ask you some questions about it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you with Microsoft? <laughs> Bill, uh, any other questions? <laughs> yes. So you you do use LaserFish to store your uh, internal documents, is that correct? Yes. And you're using a web-based version of it, right? We actually use everything. We use the client by default. All the clients in the web. Well, yeah, by default, all users have the client installed on their computers. That's the main way that everyone accesses it. Uh, we do have web access for, I guess we didn't mention this, but when we have auditors come in, uh, the way we provide auditors access is through the web. So we essentially give them a link to give them limited access to only the files they need to see. So they use web access, and our CRM integration uses web access as well. Okay, but the actual stuff you guys use is on your own cloud server. Yeah, we, we so we, we house everything in house. So so I mean, that's you have a cloud server, you have your own server. 
Uh-huh. Yeah, we we have our what we call our private cloud actually, but it's 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 yeah we we install we we choose we choose to install locally because you have so much more flexibility doing it that way versus getting like the cloud CRM or the cloud laser fish. So that's kind of like our take on that. One last question: in the, in the financial services industry, you have a lot of uh, redundant documents that are kept. Like Schwab might have the account form, and you guys have the account form, and do you guys have a, a protocol, or uh, you know, do you keep multiple copies of that stuff? Or? Uh, well, so right now we're we do keep multiple copies now, essentially, but we are working on a project to send, uh, you know, find all the similar documents across the bank, the advisor side, and their uh, I guess custodians or cores, and. Uh, bring them together so that we don't have to keep multiple copies, we can only keep one. And uh, we're trying to separate out all of our clients into essentially entity and um, a sort of specialty you know, categories where entity based would be any kind of document shared between uh, the whole in- or our whole company. And you know, specialty ones would just be for so, that product line. Yeah, just, just to add to that, so if you picture how we essentially approach um, the Laserfish folder structure is um, from from this is from I, I, I've been dabbling with imaging since like 2005. So it's and, and the way it's, the approach has always been, look at how your doc how your cabinet is structured now, right? How you, you you file everything by A to Z. Here's your loan file, here's A to Z, for example. I'm, I'm speaking for the bank side. Now. Here's your loan file from A to Z, uh, and so that's how you file it. So regardless if if, if John Smith has 19 loans you've got 19 different files for John Smith's different loans because it's sorted by loan number. So we're looking at that now holistically with, 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 with compliance regulations coming in. Now, now we, we even have a process where BSA grabs files, our, our compliance group grabs files for anti-money laundering and they want to create a separate high-risk files, keep them all separately. So we, we use Laserfish for all that too. So we're coming in right now, we're, we're taking, we're re- reorganizing our whole, uh, or we have plans to reorganize our whole Laserfish structure by separating out by entities. So instead of having one, two, three, four, five John Smith loan A, one, two, three, four, five, six John Smith, and all these different things, we're going to create an entity called John Smith. All of these entity docs are going to live in John Smith. Loan specific docs then live in the files, and we're going to we're going to we're going to tie everything together using shortcuts. So we've got all these different. We haven't even told ECSs. They're probably going, oh my god, what do I do? Okay, so, <laughs> but um, th- that's that's something that we have that, that, that we're exploring. So we're talking to different departments right now. So we're we're essentially structuring it like the way the core systems are structured. So you essentially have a have a contact, and 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 you tie your contacts in with multiple accounts, right? So that's essentially our 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 our, our next organizational project here with, with, with the next phase of laser fish. And we've tested with a couple of small ones. It does work. Yeah, Linda, you can put that down too. It does work. <laughs> so from that from that set from that side. So we're it does it does a lot of different things. So do we use document links? Uh, shortcuts, right? Yeah we just use shortcuts. We don't use links. So yeah. essentially um, I guess a good example is our advisor uh, our advisor documents. The way they're um, or they were organized was by uh, account again, A to Z. But once we built it, later on they wanted a different view which had it by family, uh, by family name or by relationship manager name. So essentially we kept all the files in A to Z format and then we created shortcuts for them in these different other formats just to make it easier for them to find. Yep. Do you, do you associate, do you use management? Because in Laserfish Manager, you have various linked content. That can uh, connect, to the, the, uh, connect the application with uh, the statements and uh, all these functions together. Yeah, so we don't use the links. We, we just maybe use we document should. types. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we should. Hey, maybe we should. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very popular use of function yeah. Yeah. as part of the metadata. Hmm, we'll yeah. definitely we'll definitely explore that. But what, what what he says right now essentially you've got a family folder. Let's back to our friend John Smith. You've got a family folder, John Smith. It lives in the it lives in the family name and it's it's an A to Z list. So so for our for our advisor side, we we break it down by by advisor name or or by or by client name A to Z. And then we have a separate folder where the real file lives, which which lists by accounts. And we tie everything in through that family folder. So when you open up the family folder you'll see docs that are related to the family, 
and then all the accounts are essentially shortcuts from the account folder. So now maybe we should leave document. That's, that's just for ease of use. But thank I you mean, for that yeah. idea. For the link, I'll, I'll get your card too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we use document types, and then um, we essentially just make sure that all document types that we need exist in there. But yeah, yes. So we our CRM and our Outlook are connected, and we do do uh, tracking within there. So whenever there's a client, we do track that. Uh, if an attachment does come in, uh, yeah. So we have Laserfiche uh, Outlook add-in connected as well. So when they need to save an attachment, they essentially go uh, from Outlook and just save it where they need to save it. So it's not, I guess, not one seamless connection, but both of those exist and they get used hand in hand. With, with CRM, we find that because um, we, we, we converted out we, we converted out of a product called Sales Logics into Dynamics, and with Sales Logics, everybody wanted to everybody was used to saving files within CRM, and we found that pretty cumbersome because when we switched CRMs, we're like, well, we're missing all these client files. We're like, what? So now they've got a client file and they've got files that are in CRM. So it was just all over the place. So we said we need to keep everything in, in, in Laserfish. So that's why we created the link. This is why we, we added that, that Laserfish CRM link, is to essentially give them the ability to, here, here's how you save a file in quote unquote CRM. They're actually dragging in Laserfish. So. It's actually on both sides, links and household and contacts. In the activity itself? Uh, not in the activity itself, right. Yeah, correct. From the CRM record, you would essentially see the activity, and then you would see the, the repository. Yeah. So you'll read that attachment uh, when you track it in CRM. You'll go ahead and leave it there, or will you delete it out? It actually strips it before you. So we, we don't allow the storage of any attachments in CRM. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it so it only, it. yeah, it only keeps the email itself. It causes really. so much confusion. It's right. like, you know, I'm like, which, so which one is the correct one? So we, we say, no, your final destination for all files is Laserfish. It's a function within CRM. I think you just turn off no attachment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's some option in there. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for coming. I hope thank you. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it.